Ford aims for continued leadership of the super mini shaped hot hatch segment with this car, the third generation Fiesta ST. Of course, for not much more than the affordable prices Ford asks, you can buy more power. But after a drive in one of these, you probably won't want to. Want to know just how much fun it's possible to have in a ferociously fast small super mini? Well then try one of these, Ford's Fiesta ST. It's been developed like a proper performance car and we're told it drives like one too. Now if any super mini was ever going to be the perfect starting point for a class leading hot hatch, you'd think it would be Ford's Fiesta. It's been long acknowledged as the driver's choice among small runabouts and it has a shopping rocket legacy that goes all the way back to the XR2 of 1981, with the history subsequently embellished by the more powerful RS1800 and RS turbo variants that followed it. Curiously enough though, none of these models ever quite hit the spot for serious enthusiasts. Throughout the 80s, the 90s and the noughties, they tended to prefer French hot hatch rivals. First a series of small Peugeot GTIs, then in more recent years the Renault Sport Clio. Only with the second generation Fiesta ST of 2012, this current car's predecessor, did Ford finally get their attention. And the company aims to keep it with this Mark III model, which claims to offer the most responsive, rewarding and engaging Fiesta experience yet. Well, we'll see. Now, unlike its rivals, the Blue Oval has not one but two performance badges up its sleeve when it comes to cars of this sort, ST or Sports Technologies being company speak for quick but not concussive, and that's the performance level that sits just above fast but family friendly ST line models, but just below track spec RS derivatives. A badge, in other words, promising mild Madras rather than Vindaloo, and one applied to the kind of car a red blooded racer could enjoy but still use every day. Now we can't remember looking forward to a drive in a small shopping rocket quite this much. Grippy Recaro seats clamp you in as you grasp the thick stitched wheel and punch the starter. To get an engine note that warbles and fizzes impatiently with a few exhaust pops and crackles thrown in for good measure. You're ready. It isn't often with a small hot hatch that uh, the engineers get things absolutely right. Either compromises are made for day-to-day -day drivability, which rob you of that last ultimate nth of response when you're really pushing on, or you get a race-bred rocket that loves a smooth circuit, but which is so firm that it simply gets on your nerves in everyday motoring. So let's cut to the conclusion here. With this ST, the balance between those two extremes is as good as it's probably ever going to be. Over the next few minutes in this section, we're going to tell you why. Now you realise that there's indeed something very special about this car after the first few seconds of driving it. Like its direct predecessor, it is a little firmly sprung, yes, but this time bearably so, and there's a real terrier-like feel to the way it just wants to go, straining at the leash that's controlled by your right foot. Pricier, pokier hot hatches dilute this uh, eager appeal with modern technology, paddle shift transmissions, four-wheel drive and electronic damping systems. Here, there's none of that, which isn't to say that high-tech cleverness is entirely absent. On the contrary, as we'll explain, things have moved on quite a bit since the previous second generation Fiesta ST was launched back in 2012. For a start, the engine is now one of Ford's new generation three-cylinder EcoBoost units, which is able to use cleverer combustion to deliver extra power from lower capacities, which develop more efficient emissions. Now, to put into context that this power plant absolutely delivers on that remit, let's tell you it's got 25% less capacity, yet it has 33% more power than the two-litre unit used in the first generation Fiesta ST, and that's impressive progress in anyone's book. A more relevant benchmark here for potential buyers though is the previous Mark II model's four-cylinder 1.6-litre unit which put out 182 PS. That's here replaced by a 1.5-litre triple that develops 200 PS. As a result, the 60 sprint time falls by just under half a second to 6.5 seconds en route to 144 miles an hour. 
the Ford Performance Development Engineers are proud of those stats, understandably so, because those figures almost precisely replicate those of the car that the team first built its modern reputation on, the 2002-era Focus RS. Uh, that, though, was in its day an exotic super hatch. It was bought by people who expected an uncompromised racetrack ride. This car, in contrast, has to deliver up the same kind of speed with a completely different level of day-to-day -day usability, especially in terms of uh, suspension compliance. That's an area in which, to be frank, the previous Mark II model Fiesta ST rather struggled. If you owned one, carried passengers and drove it over poorer surfaces, you were left continually feeling the need to apologise to them for the selfishness of your buying decision. The Blue Oval brand was determined that this car would be different and the Ford Performance guys spent three times as long as usual on the suspension development to ensure that it would be. Now first they specified a special set of Teneco dampers uh, which are double valved, frequency selective and able to stiffen or slacken on their own without driver involvement. The engineering team's next move was to purpose design a set of now patented so-called force vectoring springs for the rear axle, which are effectively bent into their fittings to apply a stabilizing lateral force onto the rear wheels, as well as performing their usual load-bearing tasks. Now, with these in place, it was possible to specify softer ride bushes without damaging the taut, responsive cornering stability that this hot hatch had to have. As a result, this car is now firm but friendly over tarmac tears. Big bumps won't win you and you're no longer need to dread potholes and speed humps. And it all works even better when the road opens up and you get to an environment where this fizzy Fiesta is far more in its element. Uh, this model's direct predecessor was described as the anti-supercar driver's car, which meant essentially that day to day in the real world, on real public roads, you could generally have more fun in it than in something seriously exotic. It was a reputation that Ford Performance felt it could further build on this time around, and its engineers set about the project with a real sense of purpose. Uh, they made the front track 10 millimeters wider than the standard Fiesta, which makes it a significant 48 millimeters wider than the previous ST. And the body's been made 14% more rigid thanks to some extra bracing on the car's underside. The bespoke spec also includes the most sharply responsive steering rack and the stiffest rear torsion bar ever fitted to our fast Ford, an uprated high performance braking system with 278mm vented front and 253mm solid rear discs and a specially developed set of Michelin Pilot Supersport tyres. On top of all that, the ETVC torque vectoring system, which was introduced on the previous model, has been further developed. It's now even more effective at lightly braking the inside wheel as you turn, transferring power to the outside wheel where grip is needed. Opt for the optional ST performance pack, which enthusiast drivers will insist on. And this time around, there's also a Quaif limited slip differential, which uh, enables quite amazing mid-corner speed and astonishingly early throttle input, which allows you to fire this Fiesta from bend to bend. Now you don't feel it all working, you just point, plant and go and you feel like a better driver than you probably are. Now we've found that all the very best sporting cars flatter you in just that way. If you are going to drive like this, then you'll want to make full use of another piece of technology developed for this Mark III model, a driving mode system with three settings, normal, sport and track. And I we're not entirely sure that a setup like that fits with the concept of sporting simplicity championed by this car, but it's fun to play with, sport being the option that you'll probably select most often with its sharper acceleration and steering response. Now track mode is supposed to be only for circuit use because as well as uh, further sharpening the steering, it also loosens off the stability control and permits up to 60 degrees of yaw before the electronics kick in. And that's about two thirds of the way towards being completely sideways. Both the two more serious modes also include a bit of aural stimulation, thanks to what Ford calls electronic sound enhancement. Now this works through the stereo speakers, but it merely amplifies the sound that the engine's already making, rather than introducing the kind of uh, fake noise that you get with some similar systems. Uh, there's also an active noise control valve on the exhaust, which introduces a bit of a uh, theatrical popping and crackling, and that all adds to the drama. All of that, though, would be irrelevant if the basics weren't right. Fortunately, they are. 
the driving position which previously placed you high up and awkwardly is now nice and low set uh, with the stubby gear stick and ideally short reach away. It's a manual change as before there's no auto option of the kind that would uh, completely spoil this car and the shift action is as sweet and slick as you'd want which is relevant in discussion of two further features included in that optional ST performance pack we recommended to you earlier, performance shift lights and launch control. Now, uh, to be frank, we could take or leave the shift lights. They're there to tell you if you're revving close to the red line, uh, perhaps to alert dozier ST drivers who've maybe got the uh, brilliant BNO Play 10 speaker stereo turned up too loud. Launch control though is an undeniably fun tool to have, providing you don't mind torturing the clutch to oblivion. And it's a rare feature to find in conjunction with three pedals and a stick shift. Uh, select the appropriate instrument binnacle screen menu, plant your feet hard down on both clutch and throttle, and then lift the clutch and you're away. Leo Rokes, head of Ford Performance, reckons that the difference between good and great sporting cars lies in their linearity of response, or to put it differently, the way that necessarily sharp responses are combined with the kind of easy fluidity that you'd ideally want in everything from the gear stick throw to the throttle response, the steering feel, the traction and cornering momentum. He's right, of course, but finding an enthusiast oriented model of any kind that can deliver all of that is rare in our experience. The highest compliment that we can pay to this car is to say that it's much in evidence here. It's easy to go overboard and get all max power when it comes to a car of this kind. That's a temptation Ford has carefully resisted here. Thankfully, styling subtlety is what customers apparently want most these days, so there's no big badging, leery graphics, or whale tail spoilers. Nevertheless, visually, you are left in no doubt that this car represents another level of Fiesta engagement. Now, this isn't the prettiest junior shopping rocket you can buy, but it is playfully purposeful in demeanor. Uh, the business end dominated by smart honeycomb finished upper and lower front grills. Uh, smoothing out the previous model's central bonnet bulge gives this third generation model a cleaner, smoother and more sculpted look. And that goes well with these slimmer, smarter headlamps. And they look particularly good when, as here, they're specified with full LED beams. Uh, these fog lamp panels are also quite different, fashioned like the central lower air intake for better aerodynamics. Move to the side and you get a better perspective for the slightly bigger size of the car this time around and for the way that Ford has tried to make the profile more settled and less aggressively wedge shaped. Uh, now this is the first Fiesta ST, in fact it's the first properly sporting Fiesta of any kind to be available with five doors but as you can see we've opted for the supposedly slightly sportier three door version here. Uh, either way sharp upper and lower creases deliver a sense of forward motion and most models get rear privacy glass too. Now you're probably going to want to upgrade from the standard 17 inch alloy wheels to these 18 inch magnetic style machine finished rims. They're optional on this mid-spec model uh, which make the necessary serious statement and which fill the arches perfectly. The rear is distinguished by a potent low diffuser through which peep a pair of chromed exhaust pipes. Now it's here at the back that the styling changes made over the second generation model are most pronounced. Uh, the most obvious change being the switch from the previous version's vertical tail lamps to these horizontally shaped clusters which feature a more distinctive C-shaped LED night signature light pattern. Now the idea is to emphasize this Mark III ST model's wider stance and broader shoulders, hence also of the way that this restyled bumper has been scalloped to include these reflective lenses at its far corners. Um, a neater, more integrated roof-mounted tailgate spoiler completes the effect. And if you're a real stickler for detail, well, up here you might notice that the shut line between the roof and the tailgate is now much narrower. It's been reduced by 30%. And that's an example of what Ford says is an obsession with quality this time around. In short, you wouldn't be embarrassed to park this youthful junior hot hatch up at the office, but would you feel awkward about giving your boss a ride home? Time to take a seat inside. Want the headline news? Well, it's a huge improvement on what went before. The previous model felt cheap, it sat you up too high, and it delivered a messy, button-packed infotainment system with a tiny screen buried deep into the dash. 
this time around. Well, tactile quality still isn't class leading. Arrival Volkswagen Polo GTI shows the way there, but there are flush, seamless surfaces, soft touch plastic coatings, and neat splashes of chrome. Plus, it all seems to have been very well screwed together by the factory in Cologne. Avoid entry level trim, and once again, Recaro sport seats make an appearance, but this time, Ford's remembered to include height adjustment and to position them properly low so you feel more part of the driving experience. Now you need these Recaros because otherwise you might be left wondering whether the emphasis on styling subtlety might not have been taken a touch too far. Uh, yes, you do get a thick, grippy leather stitched sports steering wheel and a silver finish for the pedals, the gear stick and the handbrake. Plus there are performance branded door sill trims. Uh, you get carbon fiber trim around the dash and most models feature blue trimmed seat belts. But these trendy touches are easy to miss and otherwise there's relatively little about this cabin that shouts hot hatch. Are there other issues? Um, well, we do think the, the gear stick's been set a little low and the drive mode button is rather hidden away by the handbrake, but well, that's about it. Otherwise, the main news lies with this Center Dash Sync 3 infotainment screen, which is six inches in size on the base model, but which grows to this preferable eight inch display further up the range, and in the process gains navigation and a 10 speaker B&O Play premium audio system. Uh, either way, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, pin sharp graphics, logical menus, and fast processor speeds of the sort that previous generation model owners will wonder at. Now, if you're not familiar with the Sync package, uh, it doesn't take long to adjust to it. With the central dash monitor here, divided into sectors, which allow you to activate audio, phone, and where fitted, satna functions via touchscreen icons. Um, heating and ventilation is covered off by separate switch gear further down the center stack here, which is just as well because the display display icons on the monitor can be a bit fiddly to use. And that's despite the inclusion of smartphone style pinch and swipe functionality. Instead of stabbing away at the screen graphics, it's better to try to master the system's impressive voice activated functionality. Now that will allow you to issue simple one shot commands. So simply by saying phrases like, I need a coffee, I need petrol, or I need to park, you can easily locate nearby cafes, petrol stations or car parks and find destinations like train stations, airports and hotels. Anything this monitor can't tell you will be covered off by another informative screen, uh, this one in the instrument binnacle, a 4.2 inch display which deals with the usual trip computer functions and which can show a wide range of features including a digital speedo, a compass and the graphics for the ExtraCost launch control system. There's even a blank calm screen option if the red mist has descended and you don't want to be distracted. Now you view all this through the smart multifunction three spoke steering wheel we mentioned earlier, uh, the TFT screen Screen, sits above small fuel and temperature gauges and it's flanked by big clear speed and rev counter dials. It's all very user friendly and ergonomically spot on. And that's one reason why it's so easy to feel comfortable in this car. Although the standard blue stitched Recaros that clamp you firmly in might not be welcomed so much by those with a regular liking for the products of Colonel Sanders. We're not so keen on the rear three quarter vision. Uh, the small rear side windows hamper your over the shoulder view. So we would suggest that you opt for one of the packages that'll throw in rear parking sensors. What else? Um, well, we like the B&O Play 10 speaker audio system we've been trying here. Although unfortunately having that means you can't specify a spare wheel. And the same for some reason applies to the optional panoramic glass roof. Uh, interior storage is decently taken care of. Uh, there's a big one litre area at the bottom of the centre stack with a USB port and that'll be uh, ideal for your mobile phone. Plus you get an integrated pair of illuminated cup holders near the gear lever with a credit card slot just in front. Avoid entry level trim you get this lidded storage box between the seats and that includes a lift out tray, a pen clip and another USB port. The door pockets are rather small but you do get an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, uh, a coin tray by the handbrake lever and a further cubby by the driver's right knee here. Uh, illuminated vanity mirrors and ticket clips are built into both sun visors and you get a reasonably sized glove box too, 20% larger than before and big enough to incorporate an optional CD player if you still want to play a few of your old plastic discs. 
Inevitably, there are a few issues, things we'd want Ford to look at for the facelift. Uh, there are no roofline grab handles. The cruise control buttons on the steering wheel are a bit fiddly. Uh, plus, the centre dash touchscreen attracts reflections and the ventilation vents beneath it freeze your fingers if you linger too long on the controls. Uh, as for build quality, well, the glove box lid and the door handles let the side down a bit here. But what's important is that the bits you regularly interact with, uh, the wheel, the gear knob and the indicator stalks, for example, all feel significantly more upmarket than you might expect from a mainstream branded model. And uh, well, rear seat space. Well, these uh, heavily bolstered Recaros do slightly hinder your access into the back, but if that's an issue, then you'd obviously opt for the alternative five door body style. Once you're inside, uh, this rear compartment is actually nicer to sit in than the claustrophobically rising belt line of this three-door body shape might lead you to expect. Uh, headroom is manageable even for a six-footer, although his or her legs will be crushed pretty snugly against the seat in front if the folk ahead are of a lankier build. Uh, the low transmission tunnel will make it possible to relatively easily take a trio of kids back here too, should that ever be necessary. Uh, storage is reasonable too, thanks to space spacious side bins and seat back pockets, plus there's a central cubby and a couple of jacket hooks. And finally, let's take a look at the boot. Now the wide tailgate gives easy cargo area access, but there's still quite a high sill to heave bigger shopping bags over. Mind you, that's common to many super mini hot hatch models, and the hassle it causes is minimized if you pay the small amount extra for the optional adjustable height boot floor. Uh, a couple of small pockets on either side are ideal for stowing smaller bits and pieces. Plus on the left, you have uh, Velcro straps and an elasticator strap too. Uh, there's also a couple of bag hooks. Predictably though, there's no spare wheel as standard, and that should free up space beneath the floor, uh, but on most models that's occupied by the subwoofer for the BNO Play audio system. Now we should give you the total cargo capacity figure, 292 litres, which meets the current class standard. If you need more room, pushing forward the 6040 split folding backrest uh, frees up 1093 litres, and that should be sufficient for the needs of most likely buyers. Now, because the backrest just flops down onto the seat squab, that doesn't give you a completely flat base for the cargo area. Um, and on top of that, this Ford's floor has quite a step in it when the rear seats are tipped forward. At least you can alleviate their second issue you with the adjustable height boot floor we just mentioned. Looking for a super mini based hot hatch with around 200 PS on tap? Then you'll need a budget somewhere around 20,000 pounds, which is the norm for a compact little shopping rocket of this sort. In theory, pricing for this Fiesta ST starts at around 19,000 pounds, but that figure applies to the base three door only ST1 variant that only 1% of customers want. To get the option of paying 650 pounds more for the five door body style that 74% of buyers choose, you'll need either this ST2 spec, which prices from £20,000 exactly, or the top ST3 variant, which costs from £21,500 and is the overwhelming favourite when it comes to Fiesta ST ownership. 71% of customers select it. Now, all Fiesta ST models get the same 1.5 litre, 200 PS EcoBoost three cylinder engine mated to six speed manual transmission. There's no auto gearbox of the sort, which is either optional or mandatory on some rival models, which means that buyers wanting more dynamic technology can save their money for the optional 850 pound ST performance pack that we'd highly recommend, which gives you a quaff limited slip differential, launch control and performance shift lights. Bear in mind that you can't spend specify this pack on the base ST1 variant. Now Ford reckons that only 20% of buyers will tick the box for this, but we think that the take up on this option should and will be much higher than that. So onto the value proposition that pricing delivers within this car's market segment. And let's start by pointing out that if you want the choice of both three and five doors that's offered here, your only other segment options are the Volkswagen Polo GTI or the Mini Cooper S. Both models are very similarly priced against this one. Now the Polo can't quite match this Ford's enthusiast orientated handling, while the Mini costs a bit more to run, rides poorly and has much less boot space. As for the model that used to rule this 
this class. The Renault Sport Clio, well, that also sits at the £20,000 price point, but it no longer appeals to so many buyers thanks to Renault's insistence on limiting customers to paddle shift automatic transmission and a five-door body style. The other options available to you in this sector are all three-door owner models and probably even less likely to appeal. A Peugeot 208 GTI costs around £22,000 and simply doesn't have the driver orientation of this Ford. Toyota's Yaris GRMN very definitely does, but it's vastly more expensive to run and it costs over £27,000. That's if you can find one to buy. Uh, an Alfa Romeo Mito Veloci isn't really fast enough. And the kind of a Bath 500 model that you need to match this Ford's performance, the 695 variant, costs well over £22,000, is tiny inside and will offer much cruder day-to-day -day transport. Now, if you know this sector and you're wondering why we haven't mentioned the usual challenges from Vauxhall and Suzuki, well, we'll tell you. Vauxhall have discontinued the course of the XR model, which used to be one of this Fiesta's closest rivals, and replaced it with a three-door Corsa GSI, which costs the same as a base Fiesta SD, but offers just 150 PS, so why would you? A slightly better but still dismissible option is the Suzuki Swift Sport, which has five doors, costs 18,000, but only offers 140 PS, which takes it out of realistic contention here. At the time this Ford's launch, we were still awaiting details of a more credible rival, uh, the latest version of, say, it's a Cupra due in 2019, a car which will certainly have the firepower to compete with this Fiesta. Uh, depending on when you're viewing this film, you might want to consider that, but we'd still take this ST any day of the week. If, having considered all of that, you come to the same conclusion as many buyers in this segment and you decide that Ford has produced an unequalled value, handling and performance proposition here, well, what exactly can you expect for your money in terms of standard spec? Well, the answer is actually quite a lot. Uh, Recaro Sport seats feature even on the ST1 base model this time around. And as well as the expected body styling kit and ST Sport suspension, the entry level point in the range gives you 17 inch flash gray painted five spoke alloy wheels, LED night signature rear lights, powered heated mirrors, and a Thatcham category one alarm. Inside for ST1 buyers, there's cruise control, manual air conditioning, uh, a quick clear windscreen and a flat bottom sports steering wheel with red stitching. Infotainment's taken care of by a six and a half inch SYNC 3 touchscreen, which gives you a six speaker DAV audio system, voice control and emergency assistance. That's along with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Plus, uh, there's also the Ford MyKey system, which lets you set certain functions that can be restricted with the spare individual key fob provided. So, for example, uh, the volume of the stereo or the maximum speed can be limited for younger drivers. That's if you'd let a younger driver loosen your ST. We wouldn't. Now here we have the plusher ST2 model that 28% of buyers in our market tend to choose. As I said earlier, uh, you'll need to progress to at least this point of the range if you'd like two things that typical Fiesta ST buyers often want, the option of five doors and the extra cost ST performance pack we mentioned earlier. Now the main extra element in ST2 spec is an upgraded version of the SYNC 3 infotainment system, which in this form uh, gives you a larger eight inch screen with navigation and a 10 speaker B&O play audio setup. In addition, uh, this mid-range trim level throws in climate control, rear privacy glass, a smarter machined finish for the alloy wheels, blue detailing on the seat belts, heated front seats, and a centre console between the seats, which will give you a storage box and illuminated cup holders. And finally, we'll cover the most popular top-of-the-line ST3 spec. That requires another £1,500 from you. In return, you get larger 18-inch wheels, red brake calipers, and grey and silver detailing on the Recaro seats. And they feature, in this form, lumbar support, and they gently heat your posterior on chilly mornings too. At this level, you also get a rear-view camera with parking sensors, a uh, heated steering wheel, keyless entry, auto headlamps and wipers, and some extra camera-driven safety features that we'll cover off in a minute. On to options, most of which require you to have avoided entry-level trim. Now, we've already mentioned the main one, that ST Performance Pack, so our advice would be to budget for that before you go splashing out for anything else. Uh, if you do have extra cash to burn, uh, the full LED headlamps are worth looking at, and you might also like the openable 
panorama glass roof. Uh, as you expect, a number of the features fitted to the top ST3 model are optional on this ST2 variant if you want them. Things like the 18-inch alloy wheels, uh, the red brake calipers and the rear view camera. Plus, across the range, you can have a glove box mounted CD player if you've still got a load of old plastic discs you want to use. As for aesthetics, well, unless you want your ST finished in solid race red, that's the only standard colour, you'll be paying your Ford dealer more for the paintwork. There's a range of premium or even pricier exclusive colours, including this particular car's performance blue. That's a shade unique to the ST. Uh, on to practical options, uh, we would pay the extra to have the adjustable height boot floor. Oh, and the door edge protectors that spring out to protect the paintwork edges in tight car parks. A spare wheel, one of those mini ones, can be specified only on the ST1 and ST3 variants. You can't have a tow bar, which will annoy carters and racers. Uh, there are the usual extra cost bumper protectors and air deflectors. Plus, you might want to protect the boot area with a liner and add in a load retention guard or a load compartment tray. Uh, you can also add special roof carriers and crossbars too, which you'll need if you want to add a roof box or carriers for skis or bikes. So enough uh, with general options, let's consider this Fiesta's safety credentials. Now Ford says that the B-pillar and the doors of this 7th generation Fiesta have been optimised for better side impact protection and they fitted out with uh, six airbags, twin front, side and curtain bags. Now the side bags have been designed to lift the occupant's arm away from the uh, impact zone. Uh, some rivals do include a driver's knee bag too, but uh, Ford says that this Fiesta doesn't need one of those thanks to a clever locking seat belt tongue attachment on the driver's belt which prevents slippage of that belt during an accident. Uh, now with this Mark 7 Fiesta the rear outer seats feature load limiters and pretensioners um, and another safety improvement this time around lies in the fact that um, inside the doors are pressure sensors which enable restraint systems to be activated several milliseconds earlier in the event of a side impact. Pedestrian protection is enhanced with headlamps designed to travel rearwards on impact. Plus, there's a collapsible cowl and wiper spindle assembly, which is designed to give way in the event of head impacts. Uh, now, the Fiesta was the first small car ever to be fitted with ABS braking uh, way back in 1989. And today, across the range, you also get ESP stability control, uh, tyre pressure monitoring and hill start assist, which uh, stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. In addition, as we mentioned earlier emergency assist is also fitted across the range and that's there to alert the emergency services with your exact gps location if the airbags go off in an accident for further highway safety, all ST variants get a lane keeping alert system, which warns you if you veer out of lane, and a lane keeping aid, which in such a situation will automatically steer you gently back to where you should be. Now, annoyingly, Ford hasn't seen fit to include the pre-collision braking autonomous braking system, which you can have on lesser Fiestas. Uh, you can't have that here, even as an option. However, if you can stretch to the top ST3 variant or on this ST2, pay extra for the optional driver assistance pack then your car will come with three extra high-tech camera safety systems um, traffic sign recognition which pictures road signs as you pass and then displays them for you on the dash auto high beam uh, which will automatically dip your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic and driver alert uh, which will monitor your reactions for signs of drowsiness and if necessary will prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee There are lots of things that this car does that you wouldn't expect it to be able to do. One of them is to pioneer new fuel saving technology, but that's exactly what's served up by this third generation Fiesta ST's clever little 1.5 litre EcoBoost power plant. It's the first three cylinder unit anywhere to offer a cylinder deactivation system. Now you might be familiar with this sort of thing from larger engines, but if you're not, uh, let's tell you that at less than 50% throttle and between 1500 and 4500 RPM, one cylinder is shut off improving fuel consumption, so Ford says, by as much as 6%. Now the system can disengage or re-engage the cylinder in question, that's the middle one, in just 14 milliseconds. That's 20 times faster than the blink of an eye. And the transition is uh, so seamless either way that you won't feel or hear it. Well, we couldn't anyway. 
add the benefit of that to things like an engine start stop system and the 1.5 litre units lighter weight and you'll start to understand why this third generation Fiesta ST is 20% more efficient than its predecessor despite the extra power. Now the official stats don't show that because they're now measured using the new more stringent WLTP World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure but believe us it's true. Let's get to the quoted readings. 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 136 grams per kilometer of CO2. That's pretty much the same as you get from a Volkswagen Polo GTI and significantly better than the results returned by a Mini Cooper S. Next, we'll tell you about servicing. Uh, two prepaid servicing plans are available. One that costs £340 and covers you for two years and two services. Another that costs £550 and is transferable to future owners and covers three years and three services. Maintenance bookings can be done online through the My Ford portal. And this is part of the Ford Blue Service Scheme, which wraps up all the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle. And that includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts and highlights any work required with a red, amber or green traffic light warning to rank items uh, which need attention in order of importance. There's also the Ford Service app, which you can download to your phone for free. Now this lets you locate your nearest dealer and make a booking, plus it has a couple of extra elements. It allows you to find petrol stations and it includes a Park Me feature, which remembers where you left your Fiesta, so you won't have to go hunting for it, say, in a busy multi-storey. What else? Um, well, if you're thinking of doing a few track days, and this car is so much fun that it'd be a real shame not to, do remember to budget for extra wear on brake pads, discs and tyres. As for depreciation, well, if you're a prospective customer, you'll be glad to hear that Fiesta residual values are generally on the up, as both new and used markets respond well to the increase in quality of the latest generation car. That still, though, doesn't completely explain why with this ST, some experts reckon you might get as much as 50% of your initial purchase price back after three years, which is basically unheard of for a Fiesta. The draw of this thoroughly engineered little hot hatch is that great. Now the official figure, if you're interested, uh, taking this three-door ST2 variant as an example, is after three years and 60,000 miles, 42.8%. Finally, let's tell you about insurance. It's rated at Group 28E. That's two groups lower than the previous model. Designed by enthusiasts to be driven by enthusiasts. This fast Fiesta is poised, it's priced to sell, and with 200 PS on tap, it's plenty quick enough. It is the best car of its kind that Ford has ever brought us, and it retains market segment leadership on merit. Now, as long as you can get your head around the idea of paying well over £20,000 for a Fiesta, this car is fiendishly difficult to criticise. Now, the three main issues we had with the previous model, the ride quality, its poor seating position, and the indifferent media connectivity have all been thoroughly addressed to our satisfaction. Now, true, a Polo GTI still shades this ST for cabin quality, and an Abarth 500 sounds better. Otherwise, though, uh, we can't really see beyond this Ford as a go-to choice in the Super Mini Hot Hatch class, providing you can afford to budget for the optional performance pack with its launch control and its limited slip diff. This really is a special little car, usable every day, but as focused as you could want when your favorite road opens up and you can flex your right foot, sink into those grippy Recaros and dial up a responsible amount of red mist. We'd also honestly say it's pretty much the only car in its segment which is ultimately rewarding enough to consider taking on a track day, which we think says everything. The difference, if you like, between a super mini with skirts, spoilers, and a more powerful engine and a properly developed performance car. Which is what this is. As much a go-to choice in its market sector as a Porsche 911 would be if you were looking for a classic performance sports car or a Mazda MX-5 might be for those in search of the definitive roadster. In all honesty, you'd probably have more fun in this little Ford on a public road than you could ever have in something pricier and more powerful. So think of it as one up for the common man. Small perhaps in price and performance, but big in smiles per mile. Which, at the end of the day, is exactly what a hot hatch should really be all about.